Hey there, Fox Hunt here, and you yeah, check me out. Do not take this cat home. Now there's a bit of disclaimer at the very beginning saying that uh, you shouldn't play this if you have some bout of depression or sensitive to it. Uh, there's that. Now I decided to check this out since I'm a little under the weather at the moment, so. But I still wanted to push something out, at least. So let's dive right into it. You're not having a great day, as usual. Well, that is a fantastic way to start off already. But yeah, if I, my throat sounds a little crackly or anything, uh, that's just me being under the weather. So, hopefully it's bearable. Oh, great. It's the first time in a while you felt like going out. When the middle of your walk, it starts to rain. Typical, but... May this just sign you should have just stayed home today? Yeah. You can always try again tomorrow. Right? You turn to head home when... Oh. Huh? What's that? There are only a few people around the street. Makes sense to the increase of missing persons around the area recently. Well, that and the weather. But none of them react to the sound at all. Curiosity guiding your steps, you follow the sound to the entrance of a dark, dingy alleyway. You timidly enter the alley and walk forward. The ground dampened by the rain makes your steps sound louder and more confident than you actually are. Finally, the sound source comes into view in the cold, dim light of the alley. <laughs> At the end of the alley, in the big cardboard box. It's a cat. Huh. That should have been obvious. It's an interesting looking cat. Its pretty yellow eyes shine like gold among the dark sea of its black fur. It's its front paws up on the edge of the box and looks up at you. <laughs> So oh, cute. It definitely knows it. You never had much of an opinion one way or another about cats before. But if they're all like this, it's shocking they haven't already been found a way to rule the world. You don't think you'd mind bowing down to the to a feline overlord? You look around the alley with a small frown. Who leaves cats in cargo boxes these days, anyways? Wouldn't they just jump out and leave the boxes eventually? Yeah, that is true. <laughs> the cat doesn't answer you. Obviously. It also doesn't do as you suggest and leave the box. It's just looking at you. As a waiting for you to make the next move. Yeah, no, we're gonna take the cat home. We don't follow the rules around here. You know what? You got a friend. You reach into the box and pick up the cat holding it out in front of you. Why not? <coughs> yeah, no, 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 I'm in the same boat myself, so... You bring the cat close. You didn't realize it was shivering until just now, but it slowly breathes easier as it presses into your chest. Why don't you get her, right? At least for a little while. You think a little while will probably be more than like a day. Be responsible and take you to a shelter tomorrow, but for now, let's get you out of the rain, okay? <coughs> Stop by a small local pet store for some cat food and head back home. You live in a modest apartment. One bedroom, one bathroom. One, you living alone in it. So it feels weird having another living being inside it after so long, even if it's just a cat. After locking the front door and placing the cat on the floor, you watch for a moment as it curios curiously explores the new environment. Oh, fuck. I can tell this will be a little rough for me. <laughs> Oh, so, once again, forgive me. 
leave it a few line to its own devices. You set about making the both of you some dinner. Also, the wording does not help whatsoever. <laughs> uh, you take you know, the can of cat food and open it with the tab on top. Yeah. Put the cat food on the saucer. And click your tongue to call the cat over to you. It pops up back your back and rushes over. It looks at the plate of food. And it completely ignores it. I'm hungry, I guess. You try not to let it annoy you. The guy doesn't understand the concept of money to appreciate that you spent your hard earned cash on it. It's just a cat after all. I'll just leave it here if you get hungry later, okay? The cat rubs its body against your legs with a purr. You smile. That's enough of the things for now. It follows you into the kitchen as you start on your own dinner. You decide to have you decide that you have enough ingredients for a sandwich. Bread toasted, mayo, mustard spread, turkey and cheese, and lettuce perfectly placed. Tomato sliced at how? You want just to cut your finger on a knife while slicing a tomato. Stupid. You feel a little embarrassed for such a blunder inside, tossing a knife onto the cutting board. You're about to hop to the bathroom for a bandage when the cat suddenly hops onto the counter. You sniffs at the knife and meows pointedly at you. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm right. It's just an axe. You watch as the cat starts to lick lightly but enthusiastically at the blood on the knife and your blood. You're so shocked that by the time you come to your senses, the knife has been completely licked clean. Cat's the back staring at you. You feel a little uneasy. Your cats are meat eating predators, but that was a little weird, right? Sure, you're no know, cat expert, but that was definitely not something an ordinary cat would do, right? He's just being friendly. <laughs> oh, regardless, you're not about to ban a cat in me while still running outside. Not after all your efforts. You're going to take to the shelters tomorrow anyway. What's the night of awkwardness? Weird or not, it's just a cat. The rest of the evening unfortunately goes downhill from there. Even after covering up your fingers cut with a bandage. Cat keeps trying to lick at the wound while you're eating your sandwich, while you're cleaning up the kitchen, while trying to watch TV. You gently push it away every time, but you're starting to get worried at the strange behavior. What if we got a taste for your blood? Make your food now. You're not sure what you do if it starts to get more aggressive. You keep thinking about the cat food sitting in the corner, untouched. Uh, come on, enough already. You said away a little bit more forcefully this time, out of annoyance. You feel bad immediately, but before you can do anything, the cat meows sharply at you and dashes it off around the corner and into the hall. <sighs> At this point, just worry that it's going to take a bite out of you in your sleep. Any event will have an idea. On how to calm it down. You know, you hope. You don't have many other options left other than tossing the cat out in the rain. Let's find the number of the local vet. Pick up your lamp. Uh, the lights just went out. Great, just great. The rain must have knocked out the power. You check yourself on when you find it's out of batteries. Must have forgotten to charge it before. Leaving out earlier. Now he's been so spur of the moment that I have been no doubt. You messed with your usual routine. You grab the flashlight and turn it on. It's quiet. It's too quiet. Did the rain stop? Well, then, why did the power go out? You look outside. The sky is pitch black. 
What time is it? Turn check the clock. Yeah. No, I can't kill or help. They can't sit on top of your digital clock staring at you. Thinking now, you realize the clock shouldn't be working at all with the power outage, but the numbers are lit up. And are completely going haywire. Cat stares at you. It's completely still. You think it was a statue, if you didn't know any better. It's not giving off any indication that it's alive. It's not blinking. It's not breathing. But... It's eyes. This... This is normal. You're afraid. You want to run, but you're afraid of letting the cat out of your sight. You consider tossing the cat out, after all. But, as soon as the thought enters your head, you feel the sharp urge to vomit. And those eyes, its eyes hold you still. Even with your flashlight trained on it, that's the people that have large, round, inky pits. Huh? Flashlight flickers. And the cat is gone. Fear immediately drips your mind. The sight punctuates with the rapid pumping of your blood in your heart. It's open. And your ears slowly start to pick up the sound of static all around you. How's the clock working with no power? You don't know why such a question matters at this moment. But you feel as if having the answer will make sense out of everything that's happening. That order will be restored. But no answer comes to mind. You back away from the clock. And feel as if the air itself coils tightly and abruptly in response. Like a predator prepared to pounce. But waiting. Waiting. For your next move. But you're afraid to move. You're afraid to even take a breath. And you can't stay still forever. Right? Whatever's watching you, you can already feel its impatience. It's too eager. You don't know how you know this. But, this, but you can sense it as clearly as if it whispered. Oh. Yeah, I don't want to play. Right into your ear. Right into your very soul. It won't let you wait it out. Not that you could even, if it did, you can't stay here. You have to run. With a thought, a sudden prime instinct awakens within you, making you tear yourself into a hasty burst of movement, of action. But you're so weak from the fears, grips on your mind, your legs tangle together under you in your haste, and you fall to the ground. A sharp pain explodes in the center of your foot. At first you think you've broken your ankle. Something warm and wet trickles down the length of your leg. Full leg underneath it. You hear the sound of metal scraping on the tiles after skidding across the floor. As if it had been kicked. Winded from, winded from your fall. You look up in the day and see the object cleaning you. It was strange like coming in from outside, the light pouring in from your now open front door, thoughts of how, when, who, what, in regards to your inexplicably open door, screech to a halt, as your brain finally identifies the metal object you've been staring at, it's your kitchen knife, and still tinted red from your early blunder, but that's not right. Wasn't it completely clean by the guilt dryly at the pain in your foot? You really have time to wonder how the knife ended up on your living room floor to be stepped on instead of resting on your cutting board in the kitchen where you left it. When you spy something in the darkness just beyond the knife, it spies right back at you. Pair of glowing, 
golden eyes come form of cat emerges from the shadows into the light from your doorway. It pads lightly over to the knife as if skipping in the light and bends down to lap the blood dripping from the blade. Uh, it's as it slowly begin to overwhelm you, chill the air as it starts to suffocate you under its weight. The sound of your shaky press discorded against the static, now piercing your skull, the dryness of your tongue spreading to your throat. In consequence of the sight of the stray you've taken in, licking away at your kitchen knife once again, completely clean. Setting up blood from the fresh wound on your foot. Blood. The old knife slide up to you as if in response to your sudden realization. Blood. You're hurt. Your foot is bleeding. You're bleeding. You're bleeding. The cat barely moves. Your shoulders twitching as if just considering the act of pouncing forward. Put your order on your feet and out the door. You run, or rather, limp down the empty street. The sky is black and bleeding red. With a strange light emitting from nowhere, it casts everything else in white. The houses, the trees, the road, and even you. Everything. Except your blood. You can just barely glimpse the bloody imprints of your injured foot. Leaves in your wake. With every impact it makes on the ground. It hurts. It hurts. You can't stop. You don't stop. Not when the shadows grow around you. Not when you feel the gaze of eyes all over you. Not when the road ahead of you darkened by a long shadow of something behind you. Even then, you don't stop running because... If that's the cat right there, ahead of you, then what in the world is behind you? I'm gonna look behind me. Huh? Interesting. How oh. very, very interesting. Ending zero. It begins. And that was one of the endings of Do Not Take This Cat Home. But, I want to see what happens when we go back. Now we're back here at the decision. So let's keep running. Huh. Interesting. How oh, very, very interesting. Huh. Something happened, you think, anyways. You can't really remember what. Oh shit, there's a lot of endings. Well, this is going to be something. So, what happens if we do continue? Yeah, you're walking. Right, of course. But you're actually glad that you did. The world is absolutely perfect today. That's a good sign, right? Maybe luck is finally starting to turn around. <laughs> so it's a completely new start up now. You tentatively allow yourself to feel excited for the, po the possibilities of where you could go or what you could do. Maybe even who you could meet. You're so deep in your thought that you almost miss it. Huh. What was that? Curiously? Guiding your steps, you follow the sound to the entrance of a lonely alleyway. The sunlight only just manages to reach down in between tall buildings uh, on either side. You timidly enter the alley and walk forward to loose gravel and scatter the breeze on the ground, softening your steps. Finally, the, the sound source comes into view in the warm, almost ethereal light of the alley. At the end of the alley, a big cardboard box. This cat. Huh. 
But that should have been obvious. So it's interesting cat. So it's the same start up as as before. You're still a good friend. You look so familiar, right? And again, it is a cat. Not many different ways for a standard black cat to look afro. This one sure is cutie though. Just look, it's not glaring at you or hissing at you for getting this close like all the stray cats have in the past. It's just sitting there patiently. Waiting for you to do something. Yeah, take him home. Mm. Well, why not? Right? Basically, reach out your arm for the cat, he le leaps into them and climbs onto your shoulders. You watch his head into your temple, nuzzling against him. <laughs> You he can't help but smile at Cat Studio. Let's get you out of here, right? Yeah? On the way home, you briefly consider getting cat food. But that would be a waste of time. You shrug at the odd feeling and move on. You live in a modest apartment. One bedroom, one bathroom, one living alone in it. So it feels weird having another living being inside it after so long. Even if it is just a cat. After locking the front door and placing the cat on the floor, wait for it to walk away and explore the new environment. But simply sits and looks up at you expectantly. Yeah, it's just something for the cat. I thought. Hmm, let's play with it. You yeah, know, let's pet it. It's not every day you have access to a fluffy <laughs> animal. What is this to do but to pet it to your heart's content? You sit on the floor in your living room, creep your tongue and you call the cat over. You can't dab it over to you immediately, climbing into your lap. Poor thing, you just want some attention, don't you? <laughs> alright, alright. You carefully pet the cat. I rub behind the ear. I scratch under the chin. A smooth sweep along the back. <laughs> Good. You can play the cat in your lap, enjoying this bonding time together. But the cat starts to get restless after a while. Keep petting. <laughs> You're not quite ready to stop. You feel so calm, repetitive action suiting your usually overworking mind. You keep petting. The cat leans away from your next head hat. It's trying to get out of your lap. Well, what happens if I keep petting? When you scratch on the, the cat's chin, it bites at your fingers. You might be bleeding, but it really barely hurts. More of a warning than anything. You have struggles in your hold. It's watching you closely. Well... The, the bone seriously will not stop me, so keep dead. You keep playing the cat. Yeah! Jump. The cat bites off your finger. It hurts. You're definitely bleeding now, but for some reason, you just can't stop. You don't know what it is. You're so much softer than you realized. Think. It would be shining in the faint light of your living room, but it's if the darkness of the cat's black coat is sucking in all the illumination around it, 
ring it completely low. You're drawn to it. Like you're somehow holding a deep, dark abyss right in your lap. Seems calmer now, munching on your severed finger. The stub between your thumb and middle finger is leaking. But you keep petting. You fret that your blood will ruin its fur, but a cat lolling longer seems to mind. Time passes. It's dark out now. Soft as the fur it is, your palm started to feel raw and damp under the constant friction from your petting. You think you're fainting and maybe you've had enough. It's just lift your hand from the cat. One in the flash. So there goes my hand. Your entire hand was separated from your wrist. It flops onto your lap beside the cat. The cat's claw on its front right paw glistened with crimson liquid. You don't feel it for a moment, but your body tenses, anticipating the pain as you blankly watch the cat lick at the bloody palm of your severed hand. <laughs> hurts. It really, really hurts. Then, the cat looks up at you and you feel compelled to keep petting. You're reluctant, but you're also afraid of what will happen if you don't heed the call. What will you lose next if you try to resist again? You're hurt for your incessant petting earlier. And now you've been hurt for trying to stop. It defies all logic. But that's what scares you. There's no reason for such fickle whims. You sheeply try to raise your injured hand, uninjured hand to pet the cat, but it stiffens, golden eyes glinting dangerously. Well, all right then. You raise your bleeding stump and resume petting to the best of your ability. You pet. And you bleed. You pet, and you bleed, you pet, and you bleed, you pet, you, ending seven, personal boundaries. <laughs> well, I guess I should have taken the hint of not petting too much, but I think I'll wrap things off here for today. I hope you liked your solid day. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more. Hit that notification button because we also do music here as well. And I will be seeing you guys later. Bye.